Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Fintech ki baat dil se. This is your host Shreyas Jani and today we have with us Mr. Mukesh Kalra, co-founder and CEO of ET Money. Hey Mukesh, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks Shreyas, it's great to be here. Great, great. So Mukesh has a very inspiring journey, right? Uh, if you if you look at uh, like where he's right now, co-founder and CEO of The ET Money. Uh, I think it all started back uh, when he essentially, uh, you know, started. I mean, I think he started one of his careers basically as a product manager at uh, in Mobi, and from there, I think he got bit by the entrepreneurial bug and he started something of his own, and uh, that company then got acquired by ET Money, and then here he is now. So it's it's been an inspirational journey getting acquired by ET Money and then being there. Uh, what do you, Mukesh, would want to hear from you? Ki uh, a bit. an overview of journey maybe i might have missed out something and you would want to add so over to you and then i'll probably you know bombard you with a bit of questions on all of those points sure 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 so uh, it has been a great journey uh, i largely started my entrepreneurial you know kind of uh, mm-hmm. uh, journey with inmobi and okay. i think that was that was my best you know first 3 years mm-hmm. that uh, i could have actually ever got so it was oh, right out of the right out of the co-founders and right out you know i was the first employee there after the oh, fund wow so it was way back very early uh you know the team had not even you know kind of taken an office so mm-hmm. so it was that early and uh, and that was phenomenal 3 years lots mm-hmm. lots of stories lots and lots of uh, learnings and that gave me the confidence that we can probably start on our own uh and take a shot at some of the problems that are you know burning which i believe which was giving me sleepless nights as to there is a way to if there is a way to solve this problem it will be great mm-hmm. so that's how, that's how money size actually came into being myself okay. and santosh who is my co-founder uh, we started money sites and mm-hmm. vision and the problem statement continues to be the same that is there today that you know okay. for mass affluent mid income retail consumers like you and me mm-hmm. uh, we believe that the whole ecosystem is rigged against against us <laughs> uh, because either people are selling commission based products or they are selling transactions right so so i True. think there is a there is a way to create a new uh, uh, company which is aligned to uh, to the consumer outcomes hmm. so we'll talk a bit more about it but that has been the underlying you know a uh, mission that can we actually kind of really be on the side of the customer and create a create a massively positive in- impact in the financial lives of indians definitely definitely and, that is oh, sorry please, please and yeah and at money sites we realized that you know uh, we check boxed all the entrepreneurial mistakes that you can actually kind of think about mm-hmm. we were very spoiled from inmobi uh, success <laughs> and okay. we thought that we'll come in and we'll win the world in like no time and we were like the spoiled brats kind of uh, people <laughs> and then got <laughs> and then got really amazingly humbled by you know by the market by you know by consumers by you know how hard it is to build a build a company mm-hmm. and uh, how how you know how our convictions got tested deeply right so it was a very very uh, humbling and very intense experience and uh, you know one thing that we learned was that if we continue to hustle uh, there is always a you know uh, opening and yeah. and my sites we actually went to times internet said that you have a great you know access to consumers uh, very engaged on content mm-hmm. and have a very strong fintech platform uh, why don't we have a strategic partnership and that strategic partnership turned into an acquisition over a period of time So okay. it's more about figuring out how do we actually keep the you know uh, mm. ship running, and uh, and times internet happened, and since then uh, we have been building ET Money. It's been six years now as ET Money wow. brand. It's been a great journey uh, till now, Shreyas. No, oh, indeed, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, let's take a step back. Uh, so you did address a lot of points on the. Uh, the way the industry is rigged against the masses and the problem statements that almost everyone uh, faces someone some people realize some people uh, don't realize right i'll come to that that is that is a strong point that i actually want to address but taking a step back to your journey right um, 
so you said uh, you were one of the first employees uh, of inmobi and uh, you kind of uh, started your career in an entrepreneurial environment and that uh, probably uh, also you know played a role in you uh, starting something of your own right so this is uh, this is something that i have observed as a common factor between a lot of founders that i have spoken to right in the past 3 years the number of founders that i have spoken to almost everyone comes to tell i mean like when we speak about the career journey right everyone will come and tell me ki yaar the reason why i am an entrepreneur today is because the first couple of organizations that i had in even if it was a corporate in some or the other way they were either an entrepreneur heading a new business or they were essentially doing something in a bigger organization in an entrepreneurial capacity and that is what kind of conditions them to go out and you know do something on their own i uh, would want to understand uh, you know what do you feel about the way majority of the corporates are structured this way right uh, and structured today i mean you get fresh uh, talent out of even even uh, organizations like even uh, institutes like iims and uh, bits and all of those uh, in a top tier colleges and uh, let's say more than half of them join in an organization yeah. where these guys are bound to kras and their uh, okay right uske aage na kuch dikhta hai na kuch karna hota hai so what is your view does do you think uh, that organizations overall also should kind of uh, should build entre- entrepreneurs so one of the uh, one of the organizations that i uh, recently heard of in my previous conversation is kotak right uh, especially during the initial days kotak has built out uh, or given rise to a lot of entrepreneurs at that point of time and anyone uh, who was in kotak during that say uh, first 10 uh, first 10 or years of its life is probably uh, either a founder or a ceo or you know at that that kind of a isn't that kind of a journey because they were probably you know conditioned that way by the organizational culture so would want to hear your views on what can more organizations do to condition these kind of uh, employees or should they even consider that i know it's it's, it's a bit of a random question but yeah i would want to hear your views on that no i think it's very relevant to us i think uh, there are two aspects to it from my mm. uh, my learning one is being an entrepreneur is a mindset right so true if as a person you are not used to uncertainty you are not used to high pressure you are not used to roller coaster rides you you know like as a, as a, as an entrepreneur you will always have this that you know at at night when you are coming back from office and you know kind of heading home you will see that the world is you know we are going to win the world and the m- next morning you will see somebody is you know not you know up to it and there could be like negative news right uh, suddenly and this and then you have to actually kind of come back again so this there is a si- repeat cycle that keeps on happening which takes a toll on your mental uh, you know mm-hmm. uh, and if you're not built mentally strong to weather these roller coaster rides and this is not like going to happen for one month two month three month right mm-hmm. this is be a continuous uh, ride and hence i think that mindset has to be very very clear that you know uh, this is going to be this is going to be challenging but hey we are going to you know kind of make a dent somewhere in the universe right so that's the 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 conviction to actually continue be uh, doing that so that mindset of managing uncertainty uncertainty being mm-hmm. in top waters being an explorer all those things actually combine to help you become uh, an entrepreneur and then comes to your question whether the setting is right now True. in kotak a large company could be mm-hmm. also very entrepreneurial as you said in kotak right? right and and is the environment enabling for that mindset to actually you know really create impact mm-hmm. so so as an organization i don't see there is a there is even like a doubt in my mind that there should whether it is a new company or whether it is an established company there has to be entrepreneurial mindset and it's not that it's it's just because indian startup ecosystem has become big mm-hmm. is that you look at the kind of competitive intensity that every company has to go through it's right. insane like we we you know we we are big fan of sunil mittal and you know and the whole uh, you know b- during our time you know we thought that airtel is like the startup of the you know the best of the best uh, you know entrepreneurs and now there is still a fight going on right as to how do right. i increase market share 
mm-hmm. after establishing, establishing a multi billion dollar company so there True. is no, i don't see that you know if you reach a certain scale you can be like a in a in a comfort zone mm-hmm. i think the era is over in the world now agree. if you agree to that then there is no chance that you can actually have a 9 to 5 kind of cool culture and still be relevant in the market now, whether you are small or big so which means that you know entrepreneurial culture has to be like a a given given the landscape that is evolving and thirdly uh, yes certain cultures mm-hmm. uh, nurture it much better than other cultures right okay. so like at inmobi mm-hmm. we were we were like uh, so close uh, as a team and we were going through so much together right there was a time when you know we did not take salaries mm-hmm. there was a time when our salaries ki jagah pe you know navin actually said was we need money so you need give us your credit cards also so you know pehle hi salary nahi mil raha upar se credit card bhi nahi to then it was like but but the whole idea was that we are all in it together and it is it is a very big uh, thing that we are chasing it is a short it might work it might not work so the risk mm-hmm. is always there so i think uh, in mobi nurtured a lot of entrepreneurial instincts instincts and probably mm-hmm. made us realize that there is there is a huge potential uh, now either we do it at in mobi or outside right so it was okay. that unlock happened because of such an amazing uh, enablement at in mobi no agreed i think uh, uh, as to your third point right when you when you spoke about uh, a close team working together and even giving up salary and the credit cards this will this as of now would only be possible in a very smaller startup like organization right and uh, i think this probably would mainly be driven if the vision the team essentially shares the vision and the conviction of the founder and the owners of having a team or building a team like that completely resides i think on the founder on how how well he has that passion inside him that he's able to convince others to kind of you know uh, fuse into it or become that at that point of time the organization becomes one entity because everyone's vision becomes shared right yeah. so the reason of, i mean the reason i kind of you know uh, reiterated this is mainly because you know i have experienced personally something like this and i mean i would like to think that very few people actually end up experiencing something like this when you kind of become a part of the shared vision and uh, become become one with the founder's vision and then you realize the potential and you kind of forget everything else salary and everything becomes secondary and you are like ye ye karna hai matlab ye karna hai that yeah that is essentially a, the feeling of that is something else right and i think that is what even though i moved out of that organization i kind of still see that somewhere else ki yaar this is something yeah. that i'm looking for then normal 9 uh, to 5 won't cut it for you you will be you will do that but then ultimately you are again that seeking that passion and that uh, something that bonds that uh, hindi mein jaise you know uh, that uh, we used to say ki wo aag jalni chahiye jo andar you seek that you seek that flame either it, it comes from within you or someone else ignites it in your ignites it into you but it has to be there and you can't work without that correct correct you would you don't you only work for numbers and you work for the vision that that's how it becomes correct and you made a really great point uh, when you when you spoke about you know organizations kind of uh, even after scaling they have to stay restless and they kind of you know have to uh, let's say stay competitive that in, uh, what do you say the hustling culture has to come from within otherwise they become kind of irrelevant right and this has uh, i mean uh, i'm uh, pretty sure you also have observed uh, when the fintech revolution so i should say began back in 2017 or 2016 right uh when the paytms of the world and uh, slices and fampays and everyone started coming in let's say later in the game uh banks essentially started facing this crisis right because employees at that i mean at that point of time back in 20 uh, before 2015 2014 banks were not so much into uh, mobile banking per se and it was very nascent and even uh, if we, if we talk about digital banking overall also i mean there was not that much uh, uptake of at least digitally opening savings account or digitally you know giving out loans and all of that it was still a paper based process and at that point of time when these kind of organizations came in and started giving out digital loans and opening digital accounts banks started seeing the uh, following that these organizations were getting and they kind of uh, by 2018 i think we heard a lot of panel discussions on what's going to happen to banks are they going to become just the back end 
and all of that i mean every other fintech event would have a panel discussion talking about whether it would just become a banking as a service scenario right and at that point of time uh, uh, if you if you observe if you look at it a lot of organizations started having these innovation departments or fintech departments they hired uh, chief innovations officers or chief digital officers and the strategy changed and specifically uh, since i've also worked in one of the organizations in those departments if you look at the cultural outside that department versus inside that department that department is like a startup of its own the cultural the way their employees are treated and everything so now yeah. i think that that point also really makes a lot of sense uh, when you when you look at it this way as well right these people started uh, buckling up and uh, kind of uh, had to start running in the race even though they were settled <clears throat> Uh, going from there, uh, moving ahead, when we talk about uh, the problem statement that you that you said about, right? Uh, when you when you specifically talk about uh, the masses that essentially you know uh, are basically you know given the services or offered services that are either commission based or uh, you know being sold. Uh, I mean, either commission based or transaction based, right? That, that's that's what you mentioned. So that essentially stacks the odd against the masses. So how do you like? First of all, before before we deep dive into the industry, I think uh, I want to again take a step back and understand. Uh, how did you essentially uh, figure out that this was a problem statement that you wanted to solve? For, first of all, uh, you know, uh, so so the whole thing actually started with uh, we considering ourselves to be super smart about finances. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, you know i and santosh getting ripped off <laughs> with a yule product okay. and completely sold mm-hmm. that it's a great product for us uh, and we thought that you know this is this is amazing that you know the such kind of product actually uh, this the but you know we when we deep dived it we suddenly realized mm-hmm. that you know it is probably the worst product that uh, we could <laughs> have bought and you know the first 100 rupees that you put out of that 30 rupees is going to the agent who just sold mm-hmm. that product yeah. then and for the next 5 years almost 10% of that is going to go uh, you know every year mm-hmm. and imagine that you know you are actually doing that and there is no way that you are going to make your principal back because you will need to beat the returns of that 30% in a year and then 10% for the next 5 years Sure. and and you know when we do did the math it just felt like you know we were like literally cheated into the into the game and mm-hmm. considered ourselves to be smart right mm-hmm. or that you know what you know, what about people who don't really kind of go go into the math what would be happening mm-hmm. right so i think that was one important trigger for mm-hmm. us to actually deep dive the problem not that you know we thought that this is the this is the problem that we want to solve we just deep dive deep dive deep dive and saw talk to a lot of people everybody said that everybody has got ripped off there were there were there were consumers that we talked to uh, mm-hmm. who were who actually saw a do- downfall because we started in 2010 2009 2010 where the market right. was like, you know the lehman brothers and everything uh, crisis that happened and a lot of those consumers who had actually built a nest tech for like la- for the last 7 8 years suddenly saw their network to be zero right because of one event which uh, which happened and 90 90% more than 90% of their money was in the stock market so and and there was no one who helped uh, to actually kind of or even told them ki yaar if you're closer to uh, you know 7 8 years and in 2 years you want your money back you should be actually 80% in debt versus being 90% in equity right so i think Uh, those were the things and we could see the pain that people are going through because of a simple simple things not being kind of uh, either advised or this and that's mm-hmm. where we actually dig deeper understood that why there is so much you know miss selling why there is so much mistrust that is that is there in the in the ecosystem like for example today if a bank rm actually tries to call you mm-hmm. you're avoiding the call right Uh, you don't want to meet an an agent without being prepared for it like you first you will actually prepare yourself because you are afraid that this guy is going to come and sell me something that he is going to make money from and right. i need to be actually asking him calibrated questions whether it is good for me or not it's like mm-hmm. the other way around discussion even if the use even if the 
you know the agent is actually trying to sell you a good product you don't want to kind of have so there is this okay. continuous you know a huge breeding ground of mistrust and the source of that we believe is in the revenue models is in the way the cons- the companies operate true 90% of the revenue models in the in the country is actually either via commissions is how you make money or mm-hmm. via via transactions right right tra- true all these models don't align to what to the consumer outcome so for example if you're doing a doing a trade mm-hmm. on any of the brokers mm-hmm. the broker is least bother whether you make money or not right right if the broker is really really bothered about you then they will not let you actually trade in fno true it's as simple as that right mm-hmm. like everybody keeps on talking about that less than 1% of mm-hmm. indian investors in in trading actually make any actually make more than 8% or more than fd returns oh less than 1% okay and still the whole, and still the whole ecosystem is driven mm-hmm. towards there are like you know tools and tools getting created for an education being given for you to actually enter into trading where your odds are actually worse than actually doing a startup <laughs> literally right no agreed agreed and and you know these are these are facts so i'm not like uh, you know hmm. these are known things in the market but yeah. nobody is anything the brokers are actually might want to tell you that they are on your side but on what basis so we said that you know is there is there a way to challenge this notion mm. uh, how do we how do we actually solve for this so we said that let's let's start building building you know investment products which where we don't take commissions so we that's how we launched mutual fund you know we moved to direct mutual funds where we mm. don't take commissions consumers end up earning 1% extra every single year and 1% extra over like nick over 15 years of massive compounding right? true we don't we said that we won't charge for transactions as well mm-hmm. and that actually kept that removed any kind of bias that in our thinking would ever come right because mm-hmm. if i'm not making money via commissions i'm not making money via transactions i will always suggest you what is the best thing for you as a customer right now the next logical question is how do we make money right i, I was going to ask that <laughs> so so we say that we provide you enough value mm-hmm. and we charge you for that so there is we have a we have a product called genius which is a subscription product which mm-hmm. gives you advice as to as shares where mm-hmm. you should be putting your money uh equity debt gold in which exact instruments which index funds or stocks or etfs Mm-hmm. and we help you manage it over you know with monthly rebalancing alerts so that you are reaching your financial goals right and yeah. that for that we are charging a flat fee of 249 rupees a month mm-hmm. so you know, so uh, so that was that is i think there is a way to uh, create a company which is right to the consumers right and that's what it money's mission has been and it has been rewarded with the consumer love till now so we drive close to you know we have 30000 crores of investments that mm-hmm. get managed on it money platform on any given day mm-hmm. we are adding 500 crores to 600 crores of new sips or, or new investments every single month mm-hmm. uh, we have uh, you know close to you know one in every sip in the online space that is created actually is right. originating from it money okay and, wow. you know while we are while we are glad and proud of these numbers to mm-hmm. me it is a validation of the principle that we started the company with True. and that you know that if you if you remove from your you know company and from your mission the whole biasness you can be true to the consumers and and that is actually getting rewarded the innovations that we ended up creating because of that philosophy is mm-hmm. being uh so all of those things actually are tying in like the genius product that we launched in feb is mm-hmm. actually growing at the rate of 25 to 30% month over month in this market scenario which is volatile okay wow plus because there is a need for the consumers right mm-hmm. you look at second order impact of such business models 
is mm-hmm. that as a consumer what has happened in the past 4 5 years is you have ended up actually cre- buying a lot of products so people have stocks you know few mm-hmm. stocks people have few mutual funds people have dabbled into crypto people have dabbled into like you know what not Mm-hmm. Gold. There is, you know, bonds being sold. There are covered bonds that are being sold. There is P to P. There is so much that is being sold to the consumers mm-hmm. that in a in in the last two three years, people have accumulated these products because everybody is pushing to sell them those products, right? Right. right. And now the portfolio has become like a kitchen. अभी उसमें से ना आपको अगर पचास हजार रुपए में निकालने दो लाख के पोर्टफोलियो में, it is a tough call. True. So you remove from where you should be removing. Now you want to add where you should be adding. If the markets True. are up, what you should be doing? The markets are down, what should be? These are like the concerns that actually come once you have spent like two years building a kitchen of two lakh rupees. So you know, so we said that you know we don't want to actually kind of uh, solve for any other problem, but this is the future because everybody is getting into a point. that after mm. certain threshold of portfolio size everything becomes super complex for the consumer and with technology with the product like genius we are solving that and mm. we are saying that that's a fair exchange of value that i am providing you help which betters your performance mm. gives you higher returns protects you from downside and i'm charging you a flat fee for that and that fair. is the and actually working so i think uh, the starting point to the build up to the consumers validating it to figuring out a business model on top of it which is now showing a much much bigger promise so there has been a journey which emanates from that core you know problem uh, that we identified like 10 years ago wow i have so many questions right now i'm kind of figuring out where to uh, pick it up so sure. uh, this this specific model was something that you had in mind when you started off with white site as uh, white site itself no not at all <coughs> okay not at all was just i think it it was a discovery we said that we need to figure out a way why there is so much mistrust mm-hmm. how do we solve for that you know mistrust right, uh, right. ways that you actually kind of you know you can actually solve for it how can technology be mm-hmm. brought to the, to the forefront like there was another insight that that was very you know strong for us in the early days is right. that the best of the products mm-hmm. that Uh, that are available in the market or are being created are actually created for a few hnis in the world true so, so what was it, it? Oh, sorry please <laughs> and you know and and the economics of because it is a huge you know portfolio size mm-hmm. there is a team of experts that is actually looking at the portfolio every single day for okay. an hni and trying to create a very uh, you know Uh, amazing product set and ensures that there is downside protection there is asset allocation there is in best investing principles are applied to that money mm-hmm. but the moment, the moment it comes to the mass affluent segment the economic yeah. don't allow mm-hmm. for such products to even reach the mid income you know mass affluent segment that we focus yeah, on. so we and and there is no other way mm-hmm. but technology has to actually come to come to make it happen because okay. you cannot have a team of experts you know advising on a on a 2 lakh 5 lakh portfolio right so it will not True. economically it will never survive okay. so i think uh, that was another you know insight apart mm-hmm. from the mistrust that is there that actually combined and made us you know build a lot of stuff on it mini okay so uh, let let's take a step back uh i think when when you started off in money site right what was the original uh, Idea that you had, and I just realized I've been saying money side wrong. I said white side a couple of times. Uh, my bad. So yeah, when you started money side, right? What was the initial uh, product that you had in mind at that point of time, and how did you kind of uh, pivot or come around to this? So uh, the the idea was that let's fix the purchase cycle. Frankly speaking, when mm-hmm. we started off, that you know while buying there are problems like right. select. Mm-hmm. There are problems while transacting because I'm talking about 2009, 2010 when a lot of friction was there in terms of even to start investing you had to sign a lot of documents, open an account, and all those things were there. Right? And then once you're invested, how do you continue to manage? We mm-hmm. said that we'll try to actually fix a purchase cycle. Okay, that was the starting point, 
and and we'll actually kind of bring in our understanding of technology and mobile and try to fix that you know a purchase cycle of of a of a mass affluent consumer people like you and me right Mm-hmm. And, and that was the a very crude way to actually kind of uh, think about it because we said that you know kya problem hai and we can there are problems across the across the process of the consumer buying cycle we'll start to fix it got it but over like consumers you know we got so much feedback from the consumers we understood more mar- how market power works while mm-hmm. you might have the best product best board best money and all those things but if there is no market power consumers are thinking something else and you are trying to build something else those were the those were the you know kind of learnings which mm-hmm. fed into our you know uh progressive decision making so we need to like today we call ourselves that we are productizing trust right so if there is trust uh then i think if those bondages of trust between us and the consumers are very very strong i think uh, a lot of things automatically get solved so no, definitely yeah. definitely no, i think i think with the model that you have built from a subscription point of view i think that kind of also fosters consumers trust because they realize ki are hamare har ek transaction pe paisa nahi banayega ya hame jo beech raha hai usse so commission nahi hoga correct at some point of time the customer is bound to realize ki this is This is and, how things work. And I did. Many people have realized that no? otherwise you wouldn't have reached the scale. Agree, agree. If you were doing it, then the scale wouldn't come. So for us, it is a validation. That's the big. Uh, I completely agree, and that is also probably one of the reasons why Zero Da also has been really successful, right? If you look at it from a broker's perspective, if any other broker, like before Zero Da, when I used to trade, and if someone used to come, "Yeah, you take this, take that tip, take that," and I'm like, "You're yeah. just making me do more transactions because you're making money out of it, right?" ब्रोकरेज के बाद मेरे पास क्या बचेगा एंड इफ यू आर टेलिंग मी टू ट्रेड इन टू डेज आई एम नॉट गोना लाइक मेक अ लॉट ऑफ मनी आउट ऑफ इट एनी वेज राइट करेक्ट या तो या आई मीन आई एग्री एग्री विद दैट अब व्हेन लेट्स लेट्स टॉक अ बिट मोर अबाउट द ट्रांजिशन फ्रॉम योर व्हाट इज द मनी साइड्स इनटू ईटी मनी लाइक व्हेन यू काइंड ऑफ गॉट इनटू द एक्विजिशन फेज एंड यू स्टार्टेड लाइक सो व्हाट एग्जैक्टली वाज द स्टोरी बिहाइंड दैट पीस लाइक वो कैसे हुआ So you know, one is as I said, we checkboxed all the entrepreneurial mistakes that you can think about. Uh, we thought it would be easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, we thought that you know uh, it would be, and we are we are in. We know so much. Uh, we have already you know built, worked at Inmobi, which is a huge company, and we can replicate that easily in the mm-hmm. Indian context because it was a global setup and global right. global build up. And I think. Uh, so there's a lot of learnings there but few key uh, learnings that came up very clearly and i touched upon that was you might have the best product you might have the best team mm-hmm. uh, you might have you know a, a very very strong board like navin one was an investor bloom ventures was was also starting at that time we were probably the first second check for bloom mm-hmm. ventures and uh, oh. Prasad was there, and Prasad was another angel that invested in us. And mm-hmm. but you know, but if market power is not with you, which is consumers coming and wanting to invest online, right? your your frame freeze froze so. yeah i think uh, same thing happened to me I'm just okay. checking what's the problem there is a problem at uh, one sec there is a problem at my end okay yeah? ha huh. i think we are good i'm good um okay yeah, i think now i'm also good well, either okay. one of us connection drop no worries i think uh, we'll get that in the editing shouldn't be a problem okay okay, okay. Huh, okay. so so essentially you know market power was wasn't with us mm-hmm. and that was learning number 1 okay we, we ended up actually kind of uh, then talking to times internet as i said that who has consumers mm-hmm. in, in the online space and that's how the journey to actually start going out talking to people uh, figuring out how do we get more consumers started right mm-hmm. so and that's where that's where i think you know times internet actually really like the platform love the team and and actually wanted to 
you know acquire and eventually over a period of time it happened but the idea was that you know while you while we had a lot of things going we yeah. did not have too many consumers with us so that's what you know anything any product multiplied by zero consumers is zero right so we were in a very very you know tough spot mm-hmm. in during that time it wasn't an easy one to uh, crack but i think uh, the teams continuous focus hustle relentlessness trying to figure out figure out figure out and then it happened so lucked out on a lot of you know those chance events and uh, and it happened um, i'm i'm sure that probably wasn't luck it's more of thing and hustle you're just being too humble over there but yeah no i think it's it's a lot of lot of things we if we if for example we wouldn't have got connected to times internet right why yeah. and mm-hmm. we were connected via wire to times internet if i wouldn't have met satyan mm-hmm. a very different story right so i think there is like even the 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 fact that we were fundraising during money sites uh-huh. uh our angel investor prasad dubiri right right we were not pitching to him at all during the conversation he was actually just sitting in the okay. car and we mm. were pitching to uh, to a potential angel investor in his car because mm. he had to actually kind of uh, go from the other to andheri acha and said that tum aa jao tum mujhe pitch karo and let's see if if it is an exciting proposition we'll we'll love to we'll invest and we were continuously pitching that person but essentially prasad got excited we did not know that he is getting excited we thought that he is unnecessarily asking us questions making our pitch weaker so <laughs> and then we got we got on at andheri station from the car and prasad mm-hmm. said well, i would love to invest so wow. so it's, so it's yeah. just and you know, what is it it's i think serendipity right it's just uh, a lot of luck in that so and and that's where it all started Agreed, agreed. We wouldn't have been here without that uh, conversation. Right? So I think mm-hmm. there is a lot, lot of role of uh, serendipity, and we, I'm a true believer in that. Great. No, I think the way you now put it, I think it does make sense. Right? Sometimes situations kind of have to come around to work a certain way. Like things have to happen. You can't explain it any other way. Fair enough. Uh, okay. Let's let's change gears and you know switch more into. Uh, more into the market uh, more I probably would want to understand understand from you like so in in one of the previous uh, points you said right there are a lot of assets right now a lot of people have made khichdi of their portfolio like i, I think i'm one of those people right i've invested in every everything that ex- that's exciting right from p2p to crypto to uh, nfts to even equity stock market small cases there's there are a lot of things right and and now as you, as you rightly said right now reach reach a conflection point where in i am like yaar abhi kya kar like if i want to invest more kahan pe dal right? right you kind of get stuck with that because wo isne advice diya idhar ye le liya jisne and yeah there of course there was some thought into it uh, since the fact that i came from a, that kind of a background uh, but at this point now you are like completely confused ki abhi aage kya karna hai and i mean i'm pretty sure I mean, it's good to know from you that a lot of people are there and i'm not probably the only one who is a huge thing Yeah, I was trying to make sense out of the kitchenie, right? But you know, so what is your view of when it comes to, of, let's say, unconventional assets or you know the alternative assets as they call it, right? Uh, let Let's start with P two P and probably you know then we'll move towards a slightly more uh, controversial pieces like NFTs and uh, cryptos. Would want to know your views on that? Uh, see, uh, I think. Ideally, for a consumer, in an ideal mm-hmm. scenario, is that you should be asset allocated. So, if there is a if there is a high risk uh, asset, mm-hmm. like anything or anything, you should be based on your risk profile or your investor personality. You should have a you should have either five percent or a ten percent kind of exposure to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what happens is for you know. money has a lot of emotions and you know like you feel that you want a new investing idea every single month right and that is the chase mm-hmm. that people mm-hmm. consumers end up having and and that actually creates that kichdi that i talked about right because you want new product every time then there is someone who prom- promises you a higher higher return and then you feel ki isko try kar lete hain right and it's a yeah. it's a, it's a very natural thing it's happening with everyone right mm mm-hmm. but one way to look at look at solve or get out of this mess is 
really apply the principles that best investors in the world apply right which is what is asset allocation which is saying uh you know a multi bagger if it is just 1% of your portfolio mm-hmm. suppose you are chasing the best product in the market uh, probably you you actually ended up having a 10xer right which is 10x returns wala stock in your portfolio right but only 1% of your portfolio तो वो ना ट्वेंटी एक्स भी हो जाएगा तो आपके पोर्टफोलियो में तो कुछ फर्क नहीं पड़ा ना बिल्कुल मैथ देर इज हार्डली एनी एनी गेन इवन इफ यू एक्चुअली गॉड अ मल्टी बैगर विच इज अ रेयर सिन आर यू पोर्टफोलियो वेरी सिंपल दिस सिंपल मैथ इट्स नॉट लाइक एंड दिस इज द सिंपलेस्ट सिंपल थिंग्स दैट डोंट रीच द मास राइट and mm-hmm. these are simple things that the best investors are doing so there is no uh, and that's how we thought that we can actually bring these principles probably automate it and bring it under genius and that's what genius does for you now coming yeah. back to your uh, to your uh, you know question about p2p mm-hmm. it's it's a uh, it's 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 a good product definitely for people who are who understand that to an extent right where what are the risks so so one way to look at uh, p2p and the whole thing is that you know consumers don't understand p2p like right? aap kisi ko bolenge what p2p product hai kuch nahi samjhega agreed so sachai kya hai ki what is happening in p2p at a basic construct level is that you invest in a in an fd today mm-hmm. the bank actually takes that fd and then uh, that money it lends to other people whether it is people or corporates right sure right. companies and it makes a spread and that's how they make money off and they are able to pay you 6 7 8% whatever that number is sure. in pdp what happens is that money that you are actually uh, you know uh, investing mm-hmm. you are actually lending to a set of individuals and the pdp platform makes it happen for you right and and a similar thing is happening like the bank just that ba- bank doesn't have a one to one that you know your money is being given to these 100 consumers that mm-hmm. mapping is never there in p2p that's the that's the mapping that comes alive it gives, you, it gives you higher returns it is still a lending product you know you are actually lending to uh, to individuals mm-hmm. and and uh, i think it makes up makes a good part of the portfolio for if you have if you have a horizon if you have some level of risk profile risk risk appetite the only thing that that needs to be cautioned on on you know p2p is the level of investment that you should be doing because mm-hmm. if on the other side uh, the individuals that the money is getting lent to mm-hmm. right, that individual defaults then it actually reduces your returns right true so so no so one is that you should be knowing that this is what the product is that is one second mm-hmm. is that uh, it is it is definitely not invested in stock markets right so it's not right. as risky as as a stock market investment mm-hmm. it gives you higher indicative yields or returns for a simple reason that it is still lending product it is still a deposit kind of uh, kind of product and uh, and based on your risk and how you want to actually kind of uh, you know be open to taking that it mm-hmm. can form like a 15 to 20% of your you know conservative portfolio no, understood and, and and it is it is picking up the regulatory guidelines are very strong they protect mm-hmm. the end consumer they protect you as a consumer you're mm-hmm. getting higher returns uh, higher indicative yields but there is a lot of protection in the back as well like for example the 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 money that you invest has mm-hmm. to in, has to be given to at least a set of i think 50 individuals so right. so you know so at one point in time all the 50 won't default right so your capital is always protected so there are there are you know regulations there are frameworks there are guidelines that rbi has laid down to ensure that your money is not at significant risk Mm-hmm. and then the and then the and then comes to the whole thing that is the underlying p2p platform strong enough to assess risk sure 
right so that is one aspect that one should be evaluating when it comes to investments like that uh but you okay. know but top line is that it's it's a good you know fixed income product uh for a for a set of consumers can take mm-hmm. up to 10 to 15% of your conservative portfolio that you want to create and and it gives like significantly higher returns over fd indeed so i mean uh, p2p lending as a, you know as a product i think a lot of people are still i mean they knew what exactly hota kya right everyone was doing that and i think uh the way it was marketed before the guidelines and how the guidelines kind of changed and made a lot of difference as you said now the diversification and all that that came in and the maximum exposure also you know is also a part of the factor so that plays an important role so this is still something that is a highly regulated product and it's kind of still a pretty safe to invest in let's yeah. let's get to a bit more uh, on the unconventional side right uh, we all uh, i mean as of now the situation uh, when when you talk about nfts and cryptos right the situation is such that almost everyone has at least heard about it and koi na koi exchange mein se thoda bahut dabble kar liye 500000 rupaye dal ke right but what what do you think <laughs> of these kind of uh, investment fads right i, I would, I would pro- probably call them investment fads as of now uh, what do you think about these kind of investment fads and uh, what when do you think in the in the life cycle of these uh, the like emergence of these kind of uh, assets would be the right time for masses or retail investors to actually seriously consider them to be a part of that portfolio so a, a lot of things have to happen before it actually can be uh, you know a mainstream product uh, like a gold for example right as an yeah. asset class uh the ch- the you know big challenge is that uh, for a, for majority of the consumer greed drives decisions right uh so whenever whenever there is a chance to or there is a, there are stories where people are making a lot of high returns you will see that a lot of consumers actually chase that right it's everybody is chasing high returns right at the end of the mm-hmm. day so you will see that and it's 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 crazy like at some point in time indians were crazy about fd not because it was safe but at some point in time fds were were giving a short return of 14 15 16% oh yeah right mm-hmm. so 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 you know we actually kind of make it look like people in india are conservative it's not like that it's just about you know what gives you highest returns is where the public mo- wants to move True. now what happens is uh when when greed takes over then you what will happen is you will end up actually having massive speculation bubbles created right True. and and then people have not seen the downturn which is what has happened till now you are thinking ki yaar jahan pe paisa dalunga wahan pe pair badh nahi wala right because that's what has happened right you put in right. you put in in any you know index fund or you know in this you will actually would have made money if you from 2014 to now right to agreed so i think uh, now i think there is this whole thing of that uh mm-hmm. a greed takes over speculation bubbles actually then get created but mm-hmm. fundamentally there has to be a uh, if you call it an asset class then it has to work as an asset right right you know where where does the asset get converted into uh, as a crypto so mm-hmm. so you know so the whole thing is that uh these these are natural cycles here they will keep on happening there will be a lot of innovations the fundamental innovation is in the blockchain technology and okay. on top of that is the currency right true the fundamental innovation still is is going to be game changing you know in my view mm-hmm. on top of that when you make it speculative and make money of it is a bubbles and the cycles that will keep on happening agree so you know so i think uh crypto people got you know greed to cover and uh, everybody wanted to see everybody was seeing like 60 60 70 70% returns is best to actually condition yourself that uh, as a consumer getting mm-hmm. 11 to 12% annually mm-hmm. is on a consistent basis right and and that's the realization that people don't have because in the past 5 years because yaar 12% to kuch bhi nahi hai market mein 
अभी तो 25 परसेंट तो मिनिमम होना चाहिए आई थिंक नाउ आफ्टर लाइक वन ईयर ऑफ वॉलिटैलिटी क्रिप्टो टैंकिंग एवरीथिंग गोइंग नाउ देर इज सॉलिड रियलाइजेशन दैट इवन 12 परसेंट ऑन अ कंटिन्यूस बेसिस फॉर 10 ईयर्स इज अ मैसिव थिंग सो आई थिंक आई थिंक दैट रियलाइजेशन वंस इट एक्चुअली स्टार्ट टू हैपन देन पीपल विल नॉट गो एज क्रेजी एज अगे विद क्रिप्टो और एनी अदर सच फॉर्म ऑफ यू नो uh speculative uh you know uh, areas and 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 the dabbling will not be like 90% of your portfolio but probably it will risk get restricted to 4 to 5% of your portfolio right agree that's agree. probably that's probably a way to actually kind of uh, look at it and whether it gets mainstream i think uh if blockchain is 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 the is is a huge fundamental shift currencies will become an important mode of you know uh exchange of value eventually mm-hmm. but do currencies actually become mainstream with you being able to uh pay for you know uh buying it on amazon at that fraction i think it is a long way to go there totally agree so so i think uh, that's the that's my take on you know on blockchain and crypto might be like completely misinformed wrong and you know it's not an advice in any way i'm just giving you my thoughts no oh, agreed agreed i think i pretty much agree with you having uh, been gone through the greed phase uh, back in 2014 uh, everyone was investing got into it kind of a thing came out with good returns invested again lost everything and then you realize you know this is not something that's gonna this is not something that you should probably be consisting of majority of your portfolio and should probably dabble only bit of it like you rightly said you know uh one want, would want to understand from you uh, one specific thing right when you look at uh, these kind of assets and uh, let let's take it uh, from uh, from an edmoney edmoney perspective or from or for that uh, matter any advisor and uh, keeping the regulatory uh, validation aside at what point of time uh, would you see uh, yourself i mean uh, in this scenario edmoney kind of uh, you know suggesting alternate assets so two classes right one is something like p2p uh, and uh, lease financing like uh, something what uh, new a few companies are now doing right uh, lease financing and then securitizing the returns in that way so those kind of assets and versus crypto so do you think uh, considering both of those scenarios right the regulated and the unregulated pieces when do you think uh, you yourself like eating money and other inv- uh, other advisors in fact for that would actually start suggesting this as a part of the portfolio recommendation even maybe to let's say investors with a higher higher risk appetite so uh crypto definitely not because we ourselves don't believe in it uh and and this our probably don't understand it also as a combination it could be it is a combination mm-hmm. of, uh but you know alternative assets if we believe that that's the right product for the audience in terms of uh and then the, then it's then it's a is it's an easy call mm-hmm. so we believe that you know p2p for example is is a good product in the market so that True. should be the way very soon uh other alternates we'll have to just check whether the underlying so you know so one one big important aspect that we check is is there a, is there stronger fundamentals right like p2p has been there for a huge amount of time right so okay. not but yeah. it's only now that the framework has become matured there are mm-hmm. there are no you know losses that consumers have seen uh, there are there, it's actually matured to a good point where we ble- and the and the regulation has actually kind of come in and set the ground uh, which is in the in favor of the consumers so we'll prob- mm-hmm. continue to probably look at those you know signals that the ecosystem of that product is actually maturing and it and only and if it makes sense for the consumers irrespective of the risk profile that they should be actually making it part of their portfolio to earn you know a certain uh, certain uh, return and downside protection and protect their downside i think it's a combination of few aspects that will have to come together before it uh, makes it makes its way to our platform fair enough, fair enough. i think which is a which is a fair uh, fair perspective i think you probably want to wait and watch and Again, see for, for example like, for example we uh, a simple thing that everybody does in the mutual fund industry is nfos right 
like new right. fund offers like a new mm-hmm. fund right and we principally felt that there is nothing in for the end consumers there is just again we sold that you know it's like an ipo but mm-hmm. in ipo there is money on the table for retail investors always true it's not proven <laughs> in the last one year but yeah. it's designed like that right so there is still yeah. a risk, but you know but in an nfo there is nothing there is you are actually investing in a fund with zero uh, you know performance uh, understanding you can always okay. buy after one one year two years doesn't going to not going to at least you know so we we principally took the call that we won't even after being the largest mutual fund platform will not mm-hmm. not offer any pos on so, so so there is a there is a much more stringent filtering criteria mm-hmm. for a product to make way into our our uh, our platform and also it is not about we playing god mm-hmm. we, what we believe is that is is it's actually the access to that product is to be mm-hmm. given to the consumers uh and and we stand for something as a company and right. for example things that we ourselves won't do mm-hmm. in our portfolio or in our family's portfolio we avoid those products so wow. it's a very simple principle but you know it actually kind of makes it uh it's very clarifying you know it feels very uh, very abstract as a principle mm-hmm. if if i am actually not going to buy the product that i am actually investing we, the, the good part in our business is that we can be the consumer of our product true so you know, so that actually helps us clarify a lot of stuff and and that's you know, so, so that principle combined with regulatory mm-hmm. you know works maturity of the product uh, and all that great idea system that we have no I, i think it's a it's a good grounding principle to have you know like if there is something that you personally wouldn't invest in you wouldn't want to kind of go ahead and recommend that i think that probably should makes a good uh, you know filter as well uh, again now you know let's switch gear i think uh, this has been a very interesting conversation with you so far uh, it's been now uh, i for quite some time and i've probably learned a lot from you as well you know uh, on right. uh, crypto right. ecosystem Um, uh, your P2P, uh, the insights on P2P, as well as you know, uh, your journey itself is pretty inspiring. Let's kind of uh, come around and uh, let's get to the rapid fire round. This is the last leg of the conversation, right? There will be uh, five or six odd questions that I'll say. You have ten minutes. Oh, sorry, ten seconds to answer those. Flat, no, uh, no brainstorming and no, not thinking about it too much, right? So, having said that, let's start with the first question. which is uh, who is your role model as an entrepreneur uh role model is there are many okay. uh, one, <laughs> one role model that i have is yeah. patrick collison in the uh, who who is the founder of stripe okay and uh, the way he's built the company the mission of the company is really really amazing it's very inspiring mm mm-hmm. If I have to pick one, that will be one. Okay, perfect. Um, which is your favorite book? Favorite book? Oh, they're like that is a tough one actually. <laughs> Lots that I actually so you know one way to look at that is which is the book that I go back again and again, right? It's one yes. way. Yes. So one book is Trillion Dollar Coach uh, hmm. by Eric Schmidt. Okay. Uh, I think it's a must read uh, for everyone uh, who is wanting to build a company, manage a team, build a team, and all that. I go no. back to it a lot. Right. Okay. Perfect. Uh, what time do you generally wake up? Uh, I'm not very early riser, but uh, any time between six thirty to seven is when I wake up. That is early. I mean, at least for me, it's really early. That is so. A lot of guys I know call it early as five o'clock, four thirty, five o'clock. I'm not in that. I'm not in that five or five a.m. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. Okay. So uh, you know, taking a call back to your entrepreneurial uh, journey when you started uh, Money Side, right? What was the best moment that you had? Like the mom- your favorite moment or the best moment that you could remember? Mm. when we actually got our first uh, customer i think was mm-hmm. i 
i think myself and santosh we just went back into the whole journey of getting our first customer right it was mm-hmm. it was amazing we just go through that uh, through roll back once that you know the product is live the company is there and then the consumer right. has started to come in so i think that was amazing too uh, of course uh, what's the toughest decision that you have made as an entrepreneur toughest uh, was i think uh, frankly speaking to start uh, money sites Mm-hmm. and then to actually uh, you know be acquired by times internet both of them were like really really tough because uh, the are uh, the first one to leave mm-hmm. a company which is a rocket ship which yeah. we built together as you know as early employees mm-hmm. and start on your own was super tough <laughs> like you I'm know sure. it was going all you know amazingly amazingly well for us but mm-hmm. it was short and then you know when the when the when the going was extremely tough at money sites mm-hmm. and, and figuring out and to kind of holding the team all that i think was some of the tough tough times got it one last question uh, for this episode uh, what is it that you do to disconnect and completely chill right or where do you go to for, do that so uh that's an easy one and i i try to maximize my time with my son he's 10 years old mm-hmm. okay uh, and uh, whatever time i get he's my he's my you know uh de stressor or you know kind of completely plugging myself off and yeah that's that's one very simple answer to that <laughs> that's great that's it i think i think uh, you know everyone like all of us kind of um, have a different uh, different way of doing that but i've heard a lot of entrepreneurs you know kind of uh, going back to family for de stressing and one question that i really ask you know always as a follow up question because i'm always not able to kind of uh, get a grasp of that yet is how do you kind of manage to disconnect from your work when you go home because even as someone uh, who d- works right when i come home like i still have those uh, ऑफिस की बातें इन माय हेड राइट ये करना है वो करना है दिस इज टू बी डन सो एज एन ऑटोप्रेन आई एम श्योर यू आर फ्रेडेड विद 10x मोर थिंग्स इन दैट सो हाउ डू यू काइंड ऑफ कंप्लीटली डिस्कनेक्ट एंड बी विद दैट पर्सन और बी विद योर फैमिली देयर आई यू नो ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम आई फिगर आउट अ सिंपलर फ्रेमवर्क फॉर दैट वर्क्स फॉर मी इज नॉट अटेम्प्ट टू डिस्कनेक्ट लाइक यू डोंट मेक इट फोर्सफुली दैट दिस इज वर्क दैट इज लाइफ एंड दिस इज बिकॉज़ यू नो इनवेरिएबली अह I have tried that ki yaar acha bhi 8 baje ke baad kaam nahi karunga ya fir you know right. but you know but the best part is to actually kind of just keep it more in equilibrium ki yaar don't make an att- attempt so first i stopped making attempt so it actually started working okay so, like i am i would i would be open to taking a 11 o'clock call at night uh, with my mm-hmm. son and my son is also cool about it or my wife is also cool about it so it's not like so that environment has actually become ki yaar this is work is part of life and vice versa right so it's not like compartment like has not worked for me acha acha so kind of blend it all together just blend it and and the the day i stopped making an attempt that nahi yaar you know mm-hmm. it doesn't nice nahi hota hai and it doesn't happen that is so, no right no perfect i think uh, this was great uh, it was uh, really fun having you here and we got to learn a lot from you as well thanks a lot mukesh it was okay. really a pleasure Sure, Shreyas. Thanks a lot. Uh, it was, you know, you have a you have a way to actually get a lot of insights, uh, and you. really looking forward to more, you know, podcasts from you. Sure, sure. Thank you so much.